Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another third party unlicensed figure unboxing and review video. Now today we're going to be taking a look at none other than the art figures the Dark Furion aka Riddick based off his appearance in the film of the same name. Now I personally have actually never seen Riddick, I know it's a crime, but when I was younger I was a huge fan of Pitch Black, and obviously that film also features Vin Diesel as Riddick, so I couldn't be more excited to be opening up this release. Now art figures are known to show us a couple of weird things and also a couple of really good things. Their previous figures though have had very stylized artistic representations of the characters, whereas this one, I personally do believe, is their first take at a super realistic version of the character. So fingers crossed, they've done a decent job here. Now I picked up mine from ToysWonderland.com, link for that is of course in the description below, but do bear in mind that it is unlicensed. So keep that, as I said, in the back of your mind when you are making your purchasing decisions. This is by no means a promotional video, this is a review for a product that I purchased with my own money. What we are going to do now though is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. And here of course we have the box art for Riddick himself. I really like this, I like these sort of chocolate tones, and I also like this super high gloss effect. Unfortunately you can see two light strips, that's the lighting within the light box itself reflected off the top because it also has this sort of metallic look about it. You'll see what I mean when you get yours in hand. I do like the artwork on the front. I do believe that's actually the figure itself, but they photoshopped out the arm joints there. You can see Dark Furion along the top, on the side, and of course some legal information on the back there. Now the interesting thing about this box art is it's a slip cover design, and you can of course open the front to get a sneak peek at Riddick there, plus you do have a black and white artwork of the figure himself. Now as I said in the intro, I'm really excited to get this guy out here. I haven't really ever seen a super realistic take on a character by art figures before. Usually, as I said, they go a little bit more stylized. But not this time, here we have Riddick himself, and I can already tell just by taking a look at the musculature on the arms, they've gone super realistic here. And as you can see, it looks fairly decent. Looks like there are a couple of things which we will have to adjust, but as you can see here, he does come with a bunch of stuff. So what we are going to do now is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. And here we have all of the accessories that come with Riddick. Unfortunately, as you can see, he doesn't come with a display base. A real missed opportunity, in my opinion, but we're kind of used to this from art figures, they never really include display bases. Now let's start off by taking a look at the biggest accessory first, being this bone sword. Now Daniel, my buddy, did let me know that this was actually crafted by Riddick after the events of Pitch Black and the Chronicles of Riddick, and this was used to slay some kind of big scorpion monster. I do like that it actually does open, and it is a really nice and detailed blade. It's rusty, it's dirty, and you can see it's not so smooth either. You can definitely tell this has seen some battles. The bone part is also really nicely sculpted. The paint applications are definitely strong. There are a bunch of washers over the top there. He does also being Riddick come with his goggles. The cool thing is, and I'm not sure if you can tell on camera, but they are actually translucent, so you can actually, if you shine the light directly on his face, see his eyes ever so subtly behind them. But they are nicely done as well. They're really nicely sculpted. They are all a soft rubbery style plastic, so fingers crossed they won't break over time. You also do get some additional armor pieces. You can opt to not include them, but apparently these are part of his Necro Monga armor look. They do just snap on to the outfit via these little press studs, and it is really nicely painted. You can see some dirt and grime collected in there, and it is a free floating piece, so you can move this around when you're trying to pose up Riddick. This piece does go on his right bicep, and it looks fantastic, the sculpt is really strong, and the weathering pass looks exceptional as well. 
one thing that I'm noticing is that art figures have gone pretty much all out with the paint applications on all of the accessories and on Riddick himself. These little bone daggers were apparently also crafted by Riddick in conjunction with the big one, and this does really have a nice metallic look about it with a subtle rust effect as well, and also a bone effect down the end there. He also does come with two other weapons. This one apparently is a Necromonger dagger. It is rather sharp, so be careful not to prick yourself, but it's nice and rusty. The end here looks a little bit haphazard in terms of the paint applications, but the other side looks slightly better. And this teeny tiny little throwing knife style piece is also rather sharp and sculpted very nicely. Now in terms of the hands, they are nicely done, although for some reason mine have this yellow wash over the top that kinda looks like he's been handling a hot dog with a bunch of mustard on it and somehow he's gotten it on the back of his hand. It's also on the inside. Not exactly sure what they were going with that paint application there, but the skin texture and the sculpt itself is relatively strong. But that's about it for the accessories. What we are gonna do now is get Riddick himself out here and take a closer look. And here we have him standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And I have to say, I mean, that looks like Riddick. It definitely does what it says on the tin. There are a couple of things which I'm not entirely sure about, namely that weird mustard coloration. It also extends onto the arms and for some reason onto the torso. There's also a bit of a mismatch in color tone between the body and the head sculpt, which is apparent under super harsh lighting, but I'm sure if you do have him in your cabinet in a dynamic pose, it's not going to be as big of an issue but it still is definitely something to keep in the back of your mind. Overall though, the outfit is super intricate, super frustrating, but really darn intricate. More on that in just a second. I'm really impressed with how it all comes together. The sculpt is incredibly strong. Some of those accessories are pretty darn fantastic. What we are gonna do now though is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in and take a closer look at the details. And here we have him up close and personal. And I have to say this outfit is super intricate. More on that in just a second. But starting off with the head sculpt itself first, it's really well done. I love the sculpt and the paint applications to boot look fantastic. The eyes themselves have this sort of glassy but chrome look about it. It does kind of replicate his vision from the film and I like the way they've done it. Also you can see even down to the back of the head there's this sort of wrinkling and divots just like a real bald person would have. You can also of course take the goggles and slot them over the head sculpt. They are rather challenging to fit on there. The best way I've found to do it is to sort of put them on the eyes first then wedge them down. They come across a little bit smaller small for the sculpt in my personal opinion, but trust me, once you futz around with them and get him in a pose, they're going to look slightly better. But you will have to work with them to get the best out of it. I personally may just potentially go without them though. Now talking about the outfit, with the shirt it's made of this suede type material. It's all held together by this really weird twine feeling material. It's very interesting and I've never really felt anything quite like it, but as far as I can tell, it does look accurate to the film. Now what I was talking about earlier with the body, this is an actual human style body, whereas some previous art figures releases have had this very blocky, chunky, stylized body. I'm glad they didn't do that here for Riddick, and fingers crossed going forward, they stick to this more realistic design. Now in terms of having to assemble the outfit, because yes, there is some assembly required, you will have to attach this belt and these little holsters for the blades on the side. Speaking of which, yes, you can actually install the blades inside the holsters. It's a little bit challenging to do that because the blades are incredibly sharp and do get stuck on the material, but once they're in there they look pretty darn decent. That however is not the biggest challenge with this piece. These twine wraps were a right pain to do. You do get the knee pads separately with the twine and then this added section down below. You have to individually wrap both the knee pads and also this section and then tie it up at the back. 
it was, as I said, a real challenge to get it done and to look accurate to the film, but I guess once it's done, it does look incredibly accurate. I would have personally preferred a sculpted piece just to go over the top of the shin there and it look 100% accurate right out of the box. This was a right pain, but if that's something you're into having to assemble your figures, then this will definitely tick that box. Now moving down to the shoes, these look very sort of primal caveman-esque. Unfortunately, they are a fixed design, so you don't have a split cut there, but nevertheless, they are sculpted and painted very, very nicely. There's sort of multiple sections of weathering. You've got this darker black, then it comes up to this sand color, then onto the brown, and they do look really good. Plus, the soles on the underside have a little bit more weathering as well. But overall, even though this outfit was a bit challenging to put together, I'm still pretty darn impressed. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, I honestly didn't really know who to compare Riddick to, so I thought I may as well bring out the only other art figures release in my collection, being of course their Aquaman. Now you can see Riddick is not only drastically shorter than Aquaman, but he also has a much more realistic style body. That was one of the biggest complaints that I personally have heard about art figures releases to date, was their weird overly stylized, very blocky style bodies. Why on earth they were doing that up until now, I have no idea. But thank goodness they've given their fantastic head sculpts a much more realistic body to go with because they really do work quite nicely together. That Aquaman head sculpt is absolutely fantastic, whereas the body is just super weird and doesn't really fit in with other 1-6 scale releases. But I don't personally think you're gonna have that same issue with Riddick. Just going over articulation on Riddick. Now bear in mind, this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm gonna be a little bit more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I'm willing to go. Now starting off with the head sculpt itself, it is on a fixed neck body. So that means the range of motion is fairly limited, but the torso is a rubbery style piece. So if you do work with it, you can get slightly more range of motion. The arms themselves go out to about there. They go forward pretty much the full way because they aren't covered whatsoever. You do also have a butterfly joint up there as well. There isn't a swivel at the bicep, but there is a single bend at the knee that does incorporate the swivel. You also have a regular regular 1-6 scale joint for the wrist itself, and you do have covers on both sides to make it as seamless as possible. The torso does crunch and swivel plus pivot side to side. The legs go forward to about there. You do have a double bend at the knee, but you will have to contend with all of this twine depending on of course how you wrap it. And unfortunately there is ankle articulation, but you just can't use it due to the fact that this is one single sculpted boot. Just wrapping up on Riddick. Now, going into this, I kind of didn't know what to expect. This being Art Figure's first realistic style body. But now at the end of the review, I can say that I'm pretty darn impressed. They've done an exceptional job. The accessories, the outfit, and the head sculpt are all fantastic. The paint applications are superb. Aside from that weird mustard effect that they've put on the hands and the body, don't exactly know what they were going for there, but the rest of it is really darn well done. If you're a fan of Riddick and have been waiting for a more high-end version of a Vin Diesel figure in the fact that it looks pretty much exactly like him, then this may be your pick. There have been a couple of other third-party renditions, but honestly, taking a look at them, I don't think they quite come close to the quality of the sculpt that this guy does deliver. Unfortunately, no display base, which is a huge missed opportunity, but still the figure himself is pretty darn fantastic. Now, as I said in the intro, this is an unlicensed product. That means the company Art Figures doesn't actually hold the intellectual property rights to make this character. So bear that in mind when you are making your purchasing decisions. I purchased mine from toyswonderland.com. I have included the link in the description below for your reference purposes only. Also, while you are down there, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.